Predator and Reaper drones have um, drawn a lot of attention, um, but in fact the military has used unmanned vehicles in a whole wide variety of areas, including ground vehicles for doing things like uh, defusing bombs and reconnaissance, and on the sea surface and undersea. Over time, we're going to see drones incorporate more automation, and then I'm going to shift from being remotely piloted to becoming more like robots. This transition from drones to robots will be significant because as robots incorporate more automation, they'll be able to do more on the battlefield. They'll uh, be able to conduct operations when there are no communications links and those are broken. They'll be able to uh, manage high performance tasks better with more precision. One of the things robots can do is they can be used to save money. They can be more cost effective than an equivalent um, uh, platform or vehicle that has a person in it performing the same mission. And they can do that in a couple ways. One, by taking the person out of the vehicle, you could change the design requirements of the vehicle. Maybe it doesn't need a cockpit, it doesn't need armor, it doesn't need to be as survivable, and that can save money uh, and can maybe have performance advantages. Another thing, uh, another way that robots can save money is that they can be sent forward on the battlefield and they are no longer tied to the limits of human endurance. And so they can stay out there for long periods of time until they run into power or other, other constraints. Um, and so you, don't, you just need less of them fewer in your inventory. You need to buy fewer total in order to send the same amount of combat power forward. The Navy recently did this in August with a swarm of small boats protecting um, a, a, an, a vessel, a ship that they had in a mock um, high value transit on the James River here in Virginia. There are places where the military is not fully harnessing that potential because they're not investing in the experiments and the technology development to build that up. So the fundamental question um, from a, a policy perspective as we have more automation is what tasks are you willing to automate and what things will a person still decide to do? So to give an example, in a future where we imagine self-driving cars, a person would get in a car and the car would decide when to change lanes and when to stop and when to go. The car might even, in principle, decide the route to take. But the person decides where the car is going. You're not getting in a self-driving car and saying, car, where are you going to take me? So similarly, in the military space, the notion of full autonomy is something of a red herring. There's always some balance of human and machines making decisions. The question is, what tasks are we better automated that machines might do better? Things like, say, take off and landing. Um, and what tasks that should be reserved for people. Decisions on the use of force are things that um, there's just a general understanding that that's not a place where that's a good idea to automate. Humans and machines are good at different types of tasks. Um, machines are very good at things where there's a, a concrete objective answer. So for example, landing uh, an aircraft or stopping a car, uh, there's a right answer there, right? To land it safely, to stop the car and not hit something. Um, things that require understanding context, that require what you would think of as judgment, those are very hard to program machines to be able to do that, and those are things that we're going to continue to need people to do.